Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is doing good. It is springtime here in the States. Well, here in Florida for sure. It is getting warmer, even more of a reason to get outside. I feel like if I tell it to you guys enough times, you guys will actually do it. Get outside, drink your water, get some sunshine, walk around barefooted in the grass and just enjoy, listen to the breeze. If you guys don't already know me though, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina, and I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. Over there, we do more personal story times. We go live. We also do some true crime content on my $2 tier, the type of content that is not suitable for YouTube's guidelines, so go over there and check those out. And I also have a Facebook as well as an Instagram, and you can find all of those links down in the description box. All right, so in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Kamaya Mobley slash Alexis Manigo case. Have you guys heard about this? I'm sure you, most of y'all have. Now this is a case that has been requested of me to talk about for a couple years now. I watch the documentaries or the movies. They're not technically documentaries. They're more of like reenactments of it, of the situation that happened. And I dug deep into the case and found as much information as I could a couple years ago. And I just could not bring myself to make the video and I'll tell you guys why later on in this video, but I just couldn't bring myself to. However, since then, this time has gone by, I've noticed that there has been yet another update to this case. And because of this, people that are involved in this case have spoken out, have done interviews, have even done television shows. So now I feel more comfortable making this video because they're all very much telling their own stories. Before I tell the story though, I do want to say that all I'm doing is putting together a story version the best I can with the information that is already out there. Nobody's going to truly know these people's story like they do. There's so many different sides to the story, so I'm going to do the best that I can. So let's just start at the beginning. On July 10th of 1998 in Jacksonville, Florida, a 16 year old young woman named Shannara Mobley gave birth to a precious, healthy baby girl. Like any young mother, she was nervous, but she was super duper excited. She had the love of her family surrounding her as well as the community and the church. She had everything at her house ready for her baby girl's arrival. She had a beautiful white bassinet. Now you think of this is back in the 90s. They, they looked so much different back then. Now they look like spaceships, but back then it was all ruffles and frills and Shannara's boyfriend at the time, Craig Akin, who was the father, of this baby girl was currently incarcerated during this time. And I believe he said he was incarcerated for selling the green plant. You know what I mean, right? Okay. And so she was in the hospital alone after she had given birth to this baby. She was waiting for her family to come back up there. I mean, they had been up there at different times, but she was alone at this time and she was loving on her baby. And when her baby was about eight hours old, so she's in this hospital room, 16 years old, you guys. Now you imagine you're being an adult, okay? When you're pregnant as an adult, your hormones are crazy. Think about a 16 year old, okay? She's in the hospital room holding her precious little adorable baby girl with a head full of hair whom she named Kamaya Mobley when a woman walks into the room. The woman that walked into the room's real name was Gloria and she had actually driven all through the night through North Carolina. 16 year old Shania did not know this. All she saw was a woman walking into the room dressed fully in scrubs, green pants, flowery top, with a smile on her face, and she assumed, like any normal person would, 
that this was a nurse. Gloria walked over to her, began talking to her. This is when 16-year-old Shania kind of opened up to her and told her she didn't know what all she was going to do. You know, she was a young mother and the father was in jail and that, you know, she just loved her baby and she was, you know, happy, excited to have her, but there were so many unknowns. And Gloria sat there and listened to her, comforted her, and then told her that she needed to take her precious baby, Kamaya, to get her temperature te checked and a couple tests and that she would bring her back in a few minutes. Well, Shannara told nurse Gloria that her mom was on the way in, that she really didn't want her to take her yet. And this is when Gloria told her it'd be just 15 minutes. Don't worry, get you some rest, relax, it's okay. You know, I'm gonna bring you your baby right back. And she said, okay. Well, as Gloria was walking out of the room with the baby, in comes Shannara's mom. Shannara's mom was like, oh, there's my grandbaby. Give me that grandbaby. Gloria said, no, I have to take her to get these tests. Oh, please, just I just got here. Why are you gonna take her from me? She's like, I gotta take her to these tests. She didn't want her grand, uh, the grandma Ma did not want her to leave with the baby. She had just got there, but she thought, okay, just a, just a few minutes. So she went over and sat with her daughter. What Shannara and her mother did not know at this time, Gloria, who had driven all through the night from South Carolina, was not a hospital staff. She was a distraught woman who, according to her, had had a miscarriage a few months prior and was looking for a baby. Now, she would later say that she was didn't drive looking for a baby she was just driving kind of an autopilot you know from everything that she had been through she was in a relationship that was a lot of dv involved according to her and that she was unhappy with and she had two boys that she had lost custody of and it was just like all of this mess to where she said that she after she had the miscarriage, she was started driving after work because she did work in a setting where she had to wear scrubs, got into her car, got on the interstate, drove all through the night, and then ended up in a hospital in Jacksonville in a room with a 16-year-old girl taking her baby from her. That was her story. We're going to let her tell it. And so you were leaving work from Charleston mm -hmm. to go back home to Walterboro? Well, go back to Ruffin. I was staying in Ruffin. And somehow you got on 95, you said? That's correct, okay. 95 South. And they asked you where you were going? I have no clue. I had no plans. I was not, had nothing packed or anything. And what were you thinking about during your drive? I really couldn't tell you, but it, it couldn't have been good. What was your intent at that time? It was definitely not to take a baby, that's for sure. I don't know. I, I, I can't, I mean, it was almost 20, 20, 20 years ago. I can't tell you. I, I really just cannot tell you what was on my mind. My head, back then, I was a different person. My head was in a different place. I was just broken. I had a broken heart. I had a broken spirit. I didn't feel good about myself. Moving on. As time went on and 16-year-old Shannara is, doesn't have her baby back, another nurse comes in and she was like, hey, my mom's here. Can you go get my baby? The nurse is like, well, okay, where, where is the baby at? And she's like, well, you know, this nurse came and took her, said she'd get some tests, so she made some phone calls, couldn't find the baby. Now, this this point, I want you to imagine, she's freaking, like, have you ever went anywhere and you can't find your child for a second? You're like, oh, 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 you know, like, I mean, one time I went up to the school to pick my son up. He was car rider and they had put him on the bus and I was flipping all the way out. You put my child on a bus? What bus? Where's my child going? Da, 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 da. You know, like you're flipping all the way out. Now at this point, she's in the hospital with her brand new baby, hormonal teenager. And the nurses, is, they're calling. Now they're getting frantic. They're calling all around. They can't find where this baby, oh, maybe she's in the other nursery. Maybe she's in the... I can only imagine how long it took them to finally realize that that baby was not in that hospital. But by the time they realized that that baby was long gone, this is at this point, investigators are being called. Cops are being called. They're interviewing her. She is, Shannara is hysterical. She is crying so hard. She can barely breathe. Please, man, my baby, I know you, if you don't have no kids, if you, I mean, if you was faking a pregnancy or, I mean, you just can't have no kids. I mean, how you think I feel? I, oh, true enough, I'm only 16 years old, but I have been, so that's my first child. What do you mean you've lost my baby? This was a nurse that came in here. 
The cops go and look at the security cameras, and this is where they see these photos of this woman right here, which is Gloria, who had come into the hospital. They saw photos of her pacing the hallways, and it did not take the hospital long to realize that she was not a hospital employee. The next thing you know, sketches started going up, the media was there, they're doing news reports, they're doing interviews. Please bring me my baby, please. And then it seemed like the investigators really started looking at 16-year-old Shannara and her mother like they had done this, like they had something to do with this. I mean, did they sell their baby? Did they have somebody come in here and take the baby so they could get some sort of money? Or, I mean, who, you know, the way that investigators later said was, if a, if a child goes missing by Michael Jackson, okay, there's a reason why. Somebody's wanting some ransom money, da, 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 da. Okay, this makes sense. But for this young 16-year-old girl who had to scrounge up the money just to get a bassinet, you know, th whose father is in jail, like, why would somebody come and steal their baby. This is back in 1998, so they didn't have as much information as they do do now. So they started looking at Shannara, which you can only imagine how painful that was to her. During this same time, though, Craig, the father of this baby who is now missing, was in the county jail. He said he distinctly remembers the day that he found out that his baby was born and also gone at the same time. I was just getting off work and I laid up in my bunk and I had got a call over the intercom and they called my name. So I jumped down out of my bunk. I started walking towards the front room door and I noticed there was a bunch of officers out there. I was wondering what was going on. So the door slowly slid open and I seen like five or six police officers out there and I was, uh, and, and they asked me, the, the, the uh, lieutenant asked me, was I Craig Aikens? I said, yes. And he asked me, could I come with them? So as I stepped out into the hallway, all of them surrounded me and started walking me down the hallway. And we got down to a door. But when they opened the door, I noticed it wasn't the size of the offices. It was, a, it was an office with a desk in there with a, about 10 more officers in it. So the female officer was sitting at the desk and she asked me, could I come over there? So I came over there, she asked me, could I, would I sit down? I told her yes. I mean, well, you know, I sat down. And then she was like, are you Craig Aikens? I said, yes, I am. She said, I have good news and I have bad news. I said, um, what's the good news? Because I'm already in jail, what can be worse than this, you know? So she said, um, your daughter Kamai was born, seven pounds, eight ounces. No, she said your daughter was born, seven pounds, eight ounces. She said her name was Kamaya, and I was happy. And then I, I thought for a second, I'm, as I'm excited, wasn't nobody else excited. And I'm looking around and everybody wasn't happy, you know? So I asked her what the bad news was. She said, your daughter was kidnapped. At that time, I didn't understand what she meant by kidnapping because as far as I knew about kidnapping, it only happened on TVs and movies, not to a person like me. He went back to the dorm and it took him three days to break down and cry because he just could not wrap his mind around kidnapped what do you how what do you mean and he just wanted to get out and i cannot imagine how helpless he felt in that moment of when it finally hit him like whoa like what of course he beat himself up like i should have never been in here now i'm not in here he started talking to Shannara on the phone and of course she was blaming him too like you're not here this is your fault if you would have been here this wouldn't have happened and all he said he could do was take it like he he was beating himself up too it did a lot to me in uh, cuz i felt like i didn't do my job to protect her or Kamaya you know and that's not the type of person i am then trying to talk to Shannara the next day i heard the pain in her she blamed me too, and I can understand that. Because at that time, we was all we had. Our relationship went sour after that first day. She mad at me because they breaking us, us up. Investigators started questioning Shannara about Craig, okay? And thinking that Craig was involved with the selling or the taking or the kidnapping of their baby. The way that I kind of got it from watching Craig do interviews is that maybe they even made Shannara believe that for a second, that maybe he could have been involved in something. And she was mad at him. She didn't even want to talk to him at some points. And it was very, 
difficult on them. The next thing you know, the correction officers at the jail called him downstairs, took him out a back door because this was going crazy in the media. I mean, people were seeing it all over, this missing baby, this guy is in jail. People were protesting, let him out. He's the father. What's he's in there? He's in there for some green, like his baby is missing, like let him out for the love of God. And the correction officers took him out the back door with his bag packed, opened the back door, pushed him out and shut the back door by himself. No ride or nothing. I got pushed out the back door and in front of a bunch of news media cameras. I looked back with my bags in my hand and the door was shut. Nobody was there but me. I told whoever was standing out there, the news media, whoever gave me a ride home, I'd do a meeting with them. <laughs> and the dude did. He gave me a ride home. I was, I was nervous. I didn't know what to say and what to do. I wasn't prepared for this. I didn't know I was going home today. You know, I was just trying to get to my house. I wanted to see my mama, honestly. I just wanted to run to my mom. I was going to cry to my mom. He got home, was comforted by his mother, and then from there, Shannara and Craig would have a very long journey ahead of them. They looked for that baby girl, and they pleaded to the media. They pleaded to the public. They did search parties. They did everything that they could, and days went by, then months went by, and eventually years went by and Kamaya never was found and never came home. It was even said that Kamaya's mother, Shannara, even spoke about doing a birthday party for her every single year on July 10th on her birthday and would have a cake. She would go on to have other children as well as Craig and you know, they would celebrate her birthday and, but they ended up splitting up and going separate ways, but you know, they had their own separate lives, but they always had this connection of this baby girl that was out there somewhere. I mean, they held on to hope and Craig, I, first of all, I find both of the parents as real as it's going to get type of people, right? They are just who they are and, you know, find them both very genuine in their personalities, especially Craig. Something about Craig is very, He's a, he seems like an emotional man, like as far as like in touch with no problem with telling you how he feels and stuff like that. And Shannara is very guarded. She's been through a lot. It's a lot of pain on both of them. And not to mention, I mean, they got blamed for doing this to their own child while they were going through it. The father had something to do with it. The mother had something to do with it. The grandma has something to do with it. Everybody has something to do with it. I'm sitting right there and they talking about me. Don't even must know me. Not even must trying to get to know me. And I forgot to mention too that Craig was older than her. So she was 16, he was 20 when the baby was born. So because of all this and the media attention, they went and tried to arrest him for statutory against her. However, this is back in 1998 and he, as well as Shannara and her family, said that she lied to him and told him he was she was 18. Matter of fact, she was even staying with him and his mother. And according to them, Shannara's mother told him that she was 18, which does not shock me because any of y'all that grew up in the 80s and 90s know that it was very common for young girls to lie to guys about their ages back then. You know what I mean? Now, if you live the life I lived, you know a lot of a lot of people didn't care. Men didn't care whether you was however old you was, okay? So I don't doubt that, but imagine how hard that was on them, okay? First, they were accusing them of kidnapping or selling or whatever their own child while they're going through the pain of their child being missing, and then they try to come and arrest him and kind of make him a sex offender and all, like, it was a lot. All while flipping the coin, Gloria is raising this precious baby girl. Now she changed her name to Alexis, Alexis Manigo. She went home with this baby be and told her boyfriend or husband that she was living with at the time that believed that she was pregnant with his child, that this was his kid. And he was so happy to have her. Matter of fact, he paid child support for that girl for 18 years. So after they split up, he paid child support. He was there for every little thing and believed her whole entire life up until a few years ago, that that was his kid, okay? Can you believe that? According to Gloria, now there's a lot of videos out there that tells her side of the story, so I'm not gonna do a whole lot of that because there's a lot of sympathy for Gloria out there, okay? A lot of people, because Gloria's story was she was in a relationship, 
Okay, she had it hard with this guy, and she really she had two sons already, and she got pregnant, and he was excited. And she really felt like this baby was gonna fix them and fix him, and she was so happy. They had a baby shower, all of that. She said that she had a miscarriage and she did not know it. She said she continued to grow. She believed she was pregnant the whole time up until the very end when she found out that there was no baby there. And that's when she kind of flipped out and then went on that drive and took the baby back. She said she really didn't know what she was thinking at the time. She was kind of just in another world, which we know can happen. I mean, it is... We have talked about other stories over here where when women have miscarriages or they can't have babies, they do unthinkable things, you know, and I feel, I, I feel, I feel for them. I'm going to try to keep going here and give my opinions more at the end, but this was her story. So she began to raise this baby girl. Now she had this baby girl in church. She, she gave the girl, the little girl a good life from all that we can tell and from what Kamaya uh, says. She had her in church. She was in dance. She was in all kind of little sports things. She went to, you know, good schools. This is according to them. She did really good in school. And she was a mama's girl. And she had her two brothers, okay? And she had her dad who eventually split up with the guy that Gloria said was eventually split up with Gloria. And, well, the guy she thought was her dad. That wasn't actually her dad, but he raised her like he was her dad. Split up with Gloria, and then she, Gloria ended up getting remarried some years back to whom Gloria describes as a God-fearing man. And, you know, she just, Kamaya said she had a really good life. And everything was really going peachy keen. And, I mean, I'm telling y'all what, Gloria had fake birth certificate for her, fake social security card. She had it all until Kamaya got 16. Kamaya wanted to drive. She went down to the DMV and that birth certificate wasn't good enough. They needed the one with the authentic stamp, not a copy like she had. She wanted to drive. She wanted to get a job. The woman who had took her, who was playing her mother, told her, you don't need a job. You know, you're in school, whatever. She was like, no, I want to get my own money. And it just became a, a, a source of friction between the two until eventually Gloria broke down and told her what happened. Told her she took her. And it was an emotional day, obviously, you guys can imagine for this 16-year-old girl. But at this point, she had been she had been raised by Gloria, and this was her mother. She didn't, she didn't want to deal with anything else. The way that I can take it is she just shut down. She put a wall up and was like, okay, thanks for telling me, but I don't need to know anything else. However, as time went on, it obviously got to her a little bit because at some point, Kamaya confided in one of her friends. And she told her friend, hey, I'm this kidnapped baby from here. Showed her the newspaper articles or whatever and said, that was me. Like, my mom took me away. Don't tell anybody. Pinky promise. Pinky promise, please don't tell anybody. Well, the little girl went and told her mama and the mama called the tip in and they began to investigate. When they began to investigate, they were thinking, oh my gosh, this, this child is 18 at this point. Like, what are we going to do? Da, 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 da. So they brought Gloria in for questioning. Gloria kind of sat there and said, do you have a warrant out for my arrest? Do you have a warrant to keep me? And they said, no. She was like, well, let me go then. Well, they ended up getting a warrant and getting the DNA. And they found that Kamaya was indeed the 16-year-old girl, Shannara's and Craig's little girl. Now, this should have been a happy ending. They got their daughter back, their daughter was alive, everything was well, but it wasn't a happy ending. Shannara, the biological mother, describes finding out that her daughter was alive in a very terrible way, in my opinion. FBI showed up to where she was at and said, hey, we need you to come down to the station tomorrow at nine o'clock. She said, did you find my baby? I mean, that's so sweet. After 18 years, that's, that was her, did you find my baby? They said, we need you to come down tomorrow at nine, which she already didn't like. She was like, if you found my baby, you need to tell me now. Don't make me wait through the night. They get her down there and they said, yes, we found her and she's alive. She said she still remembers that none of them were smiling. None of them seemed happy except for one lady was smiling. And she was thinking like, why aren't you guys happy? Like you just, uh, uh, this is a huge case, right? You've solved it. Why isn't anybody smiling? And then she, they kind of told her the story that she had been living with this woman and she considers this other woman her mother. 
but that she wanted to FaceTime. So they FaceTimed. And that first initial FaceTime between the mother and the long lost daughter was amazing. She said that she was squealing. She was so happy, both of them. It was just like that connection. But then it started to get rocky because Shannara and all of her pain was just ripped open again every time Kamaya called Gloria mom. And she said, well, she is my mom. She's always been my mom. And so it was a lot of struggle. However, Gloria was arrested. She took a plea deal and she ended up getting sentenced to 18 years in prison. And Kamaya, the stolen baby girl who considers that to be her mother, just as well as her biological mother, was there pleading for her not to get a much time. She didn't want her. She said, I know she did something wrong. She needs to go to prison, but she gave me a good life and she loved me. And then you've got the biological parents there saying, no, she robbed us of our lives. They are hurting. When you this, you, you reaching out to my child, that is my child. I am your mother, Kamaya. We've spent 18 years in agony, had people looking at us, blaming us, calling us child thieves, you know, writing our tales, investigating us. I mean, and you guys know, y'all are here. 95% of child abductions are by family members or close friends, by somebody that knows the child closely. 95%, okay? 800,000 children in the U.S. alone go missing every single year. See, we all out here worried about strangers. No, you need to worry about Mr. Bob next door or Auntie Carol that's real friendly and your child trust that you think ain't never gonna do nothing, okay? Y'all need to be worried about the coaches at school, right? Not worried about because God bless all of these people. But you know what I mean? Like it is typically the people that your children trust and we trust. That, you, that does this type of thing. She got sentenced to 18 years and this made the family even more strained. All the biological parents wanted was their daughter back. Their daughter that they had cried about, missed, loved, celebrated birthdays. And all Kamaya wanted was Gloria, the woman who pretended to be her mom, out of jail. And I just feel so bad for the little girl who is now, she's in her 20s now, as well as the biological parents. I did at some point have a little bit of sympathy for Gloria because I can't imagine being in that position. But then when I found out all the other stuff she's done over the years, like allegedly, according to documents online, she's had check frauds, she has had welfare frauds, she had the fake birth certificate made, the fake, you know, social security card made. It just makes me wonder if there's a bit of con artist to her. Now I watched the trial. Okay. What I could see online, which there wasn't a trial, but I watched the court, uh, videos and you can find them here on YouTube. And Gloria seems like a God fearing woman who made a bad choice in a moment and had to stick it out. And that may be it. That truly may be it. But at the end of the day, like these, this family was innocent. This mother and father were innocent in this and they lived in pain for no reason. And I can't help but to want to give my love and my sympathy more to them than Gloria. She got to, she got to have all these beautiful years of, of life with this little girl that was not hers. There were so many other things she could have done other than stealing somebody's baby. Okay. She drove, there was many a time she could have turned around when she was having her fake ID made. She was having the birth certificate made. There were so many things that she could have done differently that could have alleviated the pain of these people. And she didn't. And so therefore, you know, she's serving her time and she got again, 18 years. Now I wanted to say an update because just as of recently, like just this year in 2022, she went back before the judge trying to get a sentence reduced and guess who the main person was there begging the judge with tears in her eyes was that little girl, Kamaya, the one she stole. Okay. She was telling them, I need my mother. I need my mother. It's not really her mother, but in her heart at this point, that's her mother. That's who raised her. How confusing and painful is this? Now the judge denied it. And so she still got to finish her sentence. So she got 18 years. She'll do 85% down here in Florida. But at the same time, Gloria has other children and she has grandchildren that's missing out on her life because of this decision. And the, really there's no winners in this case. There's no winners here. 
and it's heartbreaking. And I don't know, I just really feel for Kamaya and her biological parents because they did nothing wrong. They were in the hospital. She gave her daughter to a nurse she thought was a nurse and they paid a very painful price and they're still paying this price because the mother, Shannara, is still in pain every day. There's been a lot of different things that's happened. They've done these television shows. You can see little bits and clips of Kamaya being what I would call a very rebellious, hurt teenager, cussing, yelling, you know, whatever. I saw that on one television show that she did, and I won't go into all of that, but honestly, the television network aggravated me. If you guys saw that show, it really made me mad because I know how television shows work and they want to see drama and they're trying to get the drama out of this baby girl. And I don't know, I didn't like it. And then there's also a part that people talk about where the biological mother did an interview and she said that she, at this point, she wished that her daughter was never found and came back into her life. And people gasped. They thought that was so horrible and it wasn't nice. And I'm sure that is even more painful to Kamaya, but it's also very painful to Shannara, you know, like I can understand what she meant by that. She wished that it would just would have stayed the way it was and she would have been happy there with the woman she's calling her mom and Shannara could have had this image in her mind of her daughter, of who she was and this, you know, just kept this dream alive, you know, because I'm sure she had this dream of like reuniting with her. Oh my gosh. And it was going to be wonderful, but she didn't realize she was going to have to fight for the attention from her kidnapper. You know, it's just terrible. It's terrible. I can't imagine. What do you guys think? Have y'all heard about this story? Do you feel sorry for Gloria? What do you think? Do you think she should have got less time than 18 years? I think 18 years is fair. I think 18 years is fair. She took her for it. She had her for 18 years. It's fair. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. As always, my loves, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Have a good weekend. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> we are, we are dreaming in the dark. We are nothing more than dust.